So in this series, we'll basically take a look at how Node.js implements authentication using this library called Passport.js. So as it says here, Passport is an authentication middleware for Node.js. So just like you create your own custom middlewares, this Passport is also a middleware uh, with its own set of functionalities. So the best part about this library is that there are these strategies using which we can implement different types of authentication. So we have this strategy for username and password, which is probably the most common one. We also have these OAuth strategies using Facebook, Twitter, Google, and I guess a few other vendors. So what we'll do in this series is we'll take a look at the most common applications. So we'll first go through a username and password strategy. We'll then move on to an OAuth strategy from any of these vendors. Most of the implementation behind the scenes is similar for all these vendors. So, so if you're trying to implement an OAuth strategy using Facebook, it would not be that different from an OAuth strategy using Twitter. We'll also look at a token based strategy using JWT. If you want to check out all the strategies provided by Passport, you can just go here. There's quite a few. Actually, you can see the popularity of these strategies, the number of downloads. So based on the number of downloads and ratings, you can take a guess which one is popularly used. There's also this feature tagged for these top five strategies. So we'll take a look at Passport Local, uh, which basically is the username and password strategy. We'll probably take a look at the JWT one, JWT one is quite common in web applications and we'll also go through this Google, Google OAuth, OAuth 2.0 strategy. So before moving on to individual strategies, we'll first look at a broader picture of how authentication is implemented. The most common methods are session based and token based authentication. So we'll take a look at them first and then, and then we'll move on to the code part of the series. Let's say you have an account created for this abc.com website. When you are trying to log in into this website, you'll first pass in some sort of credentials. So for example, you pass in username and password. The first thing that the backend does is it will first validate the username with the user that it's stored in its database. It will also look at the password. It will see if the password is valid. And once that is done, it will create a session for this user and store it in a separate database. It basically maintains a session for this user. Once the session is created on the database, it will send back a cookie to the client. Now this cookie is basically a string with some key value pairs. These key value pairs could be anything. You could store any sort of information in the cookie, but it's recommended to keep it less bulky because it's being sent across the network for every request. So it's, it's not ideal to have a lot of properties inside this cookie, but the main property that we're looking for is the session ID. Uh, the session ID for the session that was created in the backend will also be sent inside this cookie. So now that the user has got this cookie, whenever he makes any further request to this website, the cookie will also be sent in a cookie header any request that the user makes after he has logged in so let's say he's trying to access his profile the cookie will also be sent in a cookie header the server will try to verify this cookie see if the session id matches with the session that is stored in its database and if it seems legit then it will send back a valid response it will send back the profile information that the user is expecting if you look at this this strategy, this session based strategy, you'll see some problems here. The very first problem that we come across is it has to maintain state at the backend. So let's say we have a million users on this website. The backend has to maintain sessions for all those users. So you'll have to look at how to scale your application. If let's say the number of users go beyond the limit. This problem actually can be solved by the second strategy, which is the token based strategy. So in this case, the initial steps will be the same. The user has to first pass in some credentials. So once he shares the username and password, 
as a backend it will not create a separate session for this user it uh, takes in this username and it creates a token out of this username it will apply some sort of uh, encryption algorithm and create a token out of this username then it will share this token back to the client now once the user has got this token from the backend any subsequent request that it makes will have this token in a header normally it's done inside the authorization header but there are multiple ways to pass in this token but basically the user has to pass in this token for every request after that after the login let's say we take the same example we are trying to access the profile after we have logged in we'll pass in the token for the request the get request that we make the server will look at the token it will decrypt on its end and see if it's coming from a valid user if the user seems legit it will send back the valid response so you can see that there are no sessions being maintained at the back end so there's no extra database space that needs to be taken care of in token based strategy there's a few more caveats to both these strategies that will make a lot more sense when we are actually coding them out so we'll look at them in the later videos in the next video we'll start off with the coding section now there are some prerequisites to this series so it's better if you know some basic level of express uh, and mongodb and when we are implementing the jwt strategy you will probably need some some very basic react knowledge even if we don't know those technologies i'll try to explain them as we go along yeah so see you in the next one